All right, we are back with Neil, the 3D artist. This song's so sick. So you have quite the uh, range of stuff. It looks like you've gone from like arc, arc viz to substance to some some little dioramas to some full scenes and then the art station challenge. So let's start with your arc viz stuff. So this is three days to finish this, dude. That's kind of crazy. I don't know. I guess uh, so. One thing I'm noticing. It's because we're viewing it through your, uh, the art station layouts. We're not seeing when these were posted. So I'm just going to do this. All right. So this was 10 months ago. Okay. These look like they're lit as well. That's really interesting. Uh, Marcus, I don't think I am today. Um, hang on. Oh, you know what I did? Oh, I'm dude. I'm sorry. I think I skipped yours. Yours is supposed to be this week. Um, yours will be uh, this next Thursday. I am sorry. Dude, I've done that a couple times now. Meh. Looks good, though. I'll actually uh, hang on here. We'll just drop it in chat so people can know what's up. Um, oops. Did I just do that? No, it's right here. Okay. All right, so yeah, sorry, dude. Let me know if it's uh, if you need immediate portfolio review, um, and then I can do something off the side for you. So with oh, we're going epic pen. It's been it's been a long enough. So in this image, uh, I know this is uh, a while ago, so we won't go too crazy into it. Uh, make sure to be careful with this tiling pattern here. Um, and then I know this is really not a straight line. Meh. Uh, your geometry of the structure is very straight, right? So like if you can break that up somehow, even if it's just like structural stuff on the top, something to help break that up, that would, that would work wonders. It's, yeah, it's just being careful to uh, watch out for these, all the straight lines. The thing is, is I know that that's kind of how it is in reality, right? But the, the edges, like you can bevel them, you can get the light to wrap around them a bit. You can, uh, they call it, I call it Jankify, where it's kind of like, if an edge is straight, you can just like add little bends in it or just small amounts of, of tweaking with extroverts to just like clear that out. That helps a lot with trying to make stuff look more realistic. Because right now this is very geometric, right? It's very boxy. Uh, but that's some of your older stuff. As we keep going, it looks like you get pretty crazy with your materials. Really like this glass here. That's pretty cool. Modeling wise, uh, looks much better. They're beveling and, uh, it's just helping sell the shapes, which is really nice. The, so this is a mirror I'm guessing, and you're seeing the mirror of this and these. So the mirror is so clean that it's really difficult to tell that it's a mirror. I think I would just fog it up quite a bit just to see it. And maybe like in that fog have like the, uh, the remnants of like past, like hand wiping of the glass to see through the fog, the fog, the, uh, the mist on the, on the mirror. 
Overall, it's pretty cool though. The reason I say that is because like the wall material in the background is just throwing off my mind. Like I don't understand like if I'm looking at like a frame of these or like if this is in the back or I guess if there was a framed photo that was on the wall that was here and then maybe some like stuff that's sticking up that implies that there's a table back here. And then the framed photo like goes off of the edge. It's like, ah, oh, that's a mirror. Okay. I understand. Mirrors are weird, man. They're weird in 3D. So we keep moving on. This is eight months ago. This one looks pretty nice as well. It feels like it's missing a little bit of um, ambient. I don't know. It feels like the air is like the air has been sucked out. Like there's no atmosphere or something. But overall, I can tell your rendering is getting better. Um, everything still feels really like there's certain elements that are just really boxy. I know Ikea, for example, their stuff tends to be pretty, pretty boxy. I mean, I know for a fact that this piece back here is Ikea. There's even an Ikea website where you can download all of their assets that they sell for free. It's like a OBJ files. I'll have to see if I can find that. Um, but yeah, just uh, trying to get away from everything being so sharp is really important. Nice lighting. It's really flooded with light in here. Yeah, I'm not really picking up on shadows other than ambient occlusion and reflections kind of giving you the perceived shadows. Definitely no like contact shadows going on. The chair looks like it might be the couch might be floating. It's hard to tell. That carpet looks nice. I'd run my toes through that. Weird. Uh, all right, then we start getting into cliff materials. So this is uh, just Photoshop substance uh, bitmap to material. That is interesting. They're, uh... Oh, yeah, so your green channel is flipped in this, which is fine if it's... Uh... <laughs> What's up, Dustin? <laughs> Did I say something mean? I'm sorry. Um uh, I would flip your green channel just so it's easier to see the definitions of the shapes. Uh, just because green pointing up is easier to for the viewer to read. Here, I'll just do this and show you. So if you go into here, we'll just go to the green channel. You flip it and you go back up here. It's easier for people that look at normal maps to see the shapes that are implied in them. Toes in the carpet, new single out. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So the height looks all right for ge being generated. The AO looks pretty good for being generated as well. The roughness, the roughness is a little strange and I think that's where I'm seeing a lot of um, weirdness in this. And uh, Maybe it's just a resolution as well. I always, man, I have a hard time with stuff like this unless it's like really basic um, materials. Stuff that's complex like this, you need like uh, in your height map, you need elements to like pop forward and stuff. Uh, but then it looks like you start going down the dirty tile route. Dirty, dirty tiles. Oh man, there's even blood on this. Dang, son. I'm like, wait, there it is. Shift, left click. So... I know that that's like dirt or something along those lines. Um, let me see here. I need to scroll. There we go. So that's really good. It's the normal maps that I'm like, what? So. Man, while it's really subtle, I would be really careful about adding normal information that is that small. And then the graininess of this normal is very strange to me. And I think it's just because usually you expect those to be pretty soft. And if they're not soft, then you... Um... Oh, thanks, Curious. If they're not soft, that's usually inset. And the tiles are the, the 
pieces that are sticking up the most. Um, and maybe it is, and I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, maybe. I can't tell. I mean, overall, it looks pretty cool. It's just uh, like the blood and stuff. You want to be careful about adding blood in patterns like this or any details that are like that. Just because like when you start tiling this across walls or floors, uh, you're going to see the, the tiling really, really fast. Usually you'd want to do these with decals. And I know you're just presenting the material. So it's kind of like a... It's, yeah, it's it's more of like a presentation of the material. I understand that. Um, all right, onward. What is this? What is this madness? So this is a substance designer ground uh, is very, this is like Mars red going on. This is like clay mud. Oh, that's interesting. Wait a minute. What? So it, it looks like it's just your, your lighting that's making it. So, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Usually you want to use like a pretty uh, averaged uh, lighting. That's cool. This is, this is good that you've shown it like that just because then you get a bit more of an understanding of what's going on. Uh, as far as AO, the AO for this is almost non-existent. Like you might get a little bit of AO around the, the rocks, but it's going to be pretty subtle and almost not there at all. Just, yeah. Cause what this AO will do is basically ambient occlusion in, um, in 3D engines right now, in PBR based ones, ambient occlusion is not visible until it's in the shadows, right? So like you'll notice your materials look pretty flat sometimes in direct sunlight and that's, or direct light, I should say, because uh, you're not getting any of the depth that the AO offers if there's like little pieces of grass and stuff or little rocks causing like little AO around them. Um, and some people even add a small, small bit of AO into their into their uh, albedo to try and s fix that. Hey, thanks for the um, follow, Sparrow. Um, but when it's in shadow, that's when your AO comes comes into play. Now, just think, this albedo, that's how dark it is, right? When it's in shadow it's going to be darkened by this, this value. So it's going to be even darker. And then your roughness, your roughness range is very subtle and you want to have a lot of range in it. You want like your pebbles to have a different color from your, or a different roughness from your dirt, which has a different rough roughness from the dirt. That's a little wet, like the mud, mud, dirt, rock should all have some pretty distinct roughness differences in here. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would be careful with your AO and then the height map looks like it's just a straight up, uh, it looks like a noise and you want to, you want to define it more than that just because, uh, it helps sell that surface. I mean, maybe for this surface, it'll be okay, but it's weird that there's no, none of the little rocks and stuff are in there. And maybe those are just the high points of the, the height that you're getting that information from. Agam, I think is the, how you say your name. Thanks for the follow, dude. <laughs> oh, nice Sparrow here. If you want, here's a big, like black hole you can jump into on YouTube. We're at 209 videos right now. Holy cow. That gift does change with the uh, music. <laughs> That's awesome. Takes a nosedive. Oh my God, my face. Uh, yeah. So let's move onward. So we've got, this looks pretty cool. Uh, resolution wise, again, I would say just take this material, tile that, that pattern. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Scandal looks pretty cool. It feels strange. Like, uh, 
like somehow that light is on, but there's shadows inside of the, you know what I mean? Like it needs a light source versus like the one that's inside of it. And that might just be actually the emissive painted on. I'm not sure because if it was the light, then this would be brightening up the top there. Uh, trying to define more of your materials, I think. Um, and then pulling back on the normal strength, especially on this one is very noisy. Subsurface scattering was used in material. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So look at this. So this top image, there's shadows and stuff going on there. I don't know what's going on, but this one definitely looks better. Like you can see the subsurface working a bit more and there's not strange shadows. Uh, the strength of this normal, I'd probably half. And you can notice the, the resolution of this normal noise versus this normal noise. This is like more of like what I would expect. And the roughness between this and this piece needs to be different. That way you get some more like separation. I like that you have taken the magnifying glass and put some dirt on there. It does look a little low res, but it's, it's, it's there. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, there's some resolution issues where like this magnifying glass res is different from this one. And then this one's higher res than the, the, uh, map, the map you could go crazy with, make that a 2048 if you need to. And then the, the tablecloth, if you just make that tileable, you'll get the resolution of the table to look the same as this. And then that's when I'm saying you need to like scale back on your, your normal map noise. Cause it, it gets really busy. Oh, weapon models. So wood grain, be careful with the wood grain and resolution of your geometry. I'm not really a weapons person, but there are a ton of, uh, and by a ton, I'm, I mean like three or four pretty good weapons artists in the uh, discord. If you guys haven't joined the discord, there's a link. Um, join the discord because that is actually a, a really good resource for everyone working together to try and become better. They'll be able to point you in the right direction when it comes to weapons. If you're really interested in making weapons right now, it's hard to tell like, um, what you're interested in. It looks like environment art. So cry engine three, four, a scene I made using default assets from SDK. So this is actually really interesting because like, uh, if like, if I were to art test someone, there is a content creation artist, and then there is a propping or a level artist. And this would be a, a good example of a level or propping artist. So you don't really make any of the content, but what you're thinking about is composition, uh, where to prop things, where to lead the eye and just the overall image itself, right? Lighting, all that stuff, silhouette composition again. Um, I like the, there's a puddle here, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go full on with this, uh, critique for this type of piece. So first of all, we'll go in here, your dark ranges. You don't have very many. So doing maybe like, uh, some levels just to get a little bit of a curve in your darks. Uh, and then I want to say that I mango, what's going on? How you doing? Uh, what, what is going on? There we go. Okay. So I really like this stuff. These, these pieces of wood going across. Um, it's interesting that you put a plant here. So compositionally right now, what I'm seeing is this and this, and then a line cutting through it. Right. And then, uh, this line. So everything is leading you this way, which is cool. That's fine. The puddle here is pretty, pretty nice. I would maybe suggest grounding the puddle to either more along this side or more along over uh, closer to the edge over here, just because it's so like dead center with the image. And then, um, 
yeah, as we move forward, like you see that you've got these little rocks here. I think placing more of those around would really be beneficial. There's some here and there's a little bit there just to help break up the ground some more. And then every once in a while, maybe a little bit of grass or a little weed or something that's coming out near the, uh, near rocks. Uh, yeah. So as you're continuing this way, I think if you were to take this ground in this area, especially with the reason the puddle being there and actually lowering the ground just a little bit in there. So it's kind of like a dip, right? So it's kind of like a common path that people take. Uh, I like this building being here. What I don't like is uh, how close it is to the bottom of this bridge. I would either make it shorter or bring the building closer so that it cuts into the bridge more. Cause like with them being really close, it gets kind of weird. Uh, I think the atmosphere is a little too thick. So you're not getting like right now you've got this here do this again with another layer. As far as layering goes, that's why, that's why I clear it real. Uh, so you have this space, right? Uh, let's do this wiener territory. I have a wiener dog, man. That's all I see all day now. Um, and then you have the backdrop, which is all this back here. I guess you would even get even more hardcore with it. You, it's like this stuff, right? But there's, there's also the furthest area. And then I feel like this needs its own separation. So it would be like one, two, three, four, right? I mean, even this building could probably be part of the four. So like, do this maybe. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is uh, if you're going to do propping like this, you got to go full on. You got to go full on with the, with the propping. So like where the water is, like adding a few little rocks back here. Um, some more rocks to break up this edge. So it's not such a, like a straight line. And then you have to like, this actually looks unfinished. You have to finish the back area if you want this to succeed. And it can be as easy as taking this tree and just duping it around so that you get some irregular shapes to the back here. And then also some more back here. Uh, and yes, I am seeing that now. Good catch, Dustin. This tree is in the middle of the water. If it doesn't belong there, I think I think that I think that's actually a mistake, because yeah, that that tree needs to be maybe over here, or here. Actually, if you put it here, that's probably not a good idea, because you have one here. The positioning of this one is nice. It just needs to be either closer or further. And I would like to see something here. I don't know. Maybe it could just be a rock and another rock here. Rocks, man. Rocks for days. It's a little bit of grass. Water trees. But yeah, overall, I, I like the I like the layout. I'd be careful about how this tree ends at the same edge as this. Like maybe move the tree more left and move this tree more left. <laughs> the other thing is you have to make sure that your trees aren't all the same. And that can be as easy as rotating them. So like if I lower the opacity and start moving this one around, it's very very close to the same as that one, right? So like if you were to just take that tree and rotate it towards you, then it becomes more round or rotate it left. You don't want it to be fully left because then you'll get this mirror effect, but yeah. Um, so that one's pretty cool. This is, this is good level art stuff where you're just propping and, and thinking about the space. But yeah, you got to finish these scenes if you're going to if you're going to go this route and then like get some variety in the height of the grass. That way it's not just like a clean cut. Let's see what else we got here. This is another CryEngine 5 day lighting. <laughs> nice. I like the uh so the rooster just chilling there. 
I mean, this looks pretty cool. I like that there's a directionality to this. The plants feel a bit random. This one has a, a better sense of direction just because you have like a bright light here and then it gets darker over here. You have a break too and then the light comes through and then you got a path to go through. The rooster might be a little too centered. Maybe if it was like right here. I don't know. Like that could be. I would like it if the path was a little bit more windy as well. Oh, there's another guy right here. Dude, I didn't even see that one. Crazy. Yeah, like over here is pretty empty. I mean, you could tell a story with some props there. Or just maybe some rocks or like a, a burnt out campfire that used to be. Stealth rooster. That's awesome. Oh, it's an entity place. So it just kind of moves around and does its own thing. Oh, that's funny. Well, you're just going to have to sit there and wait for him to move into the right spot and then screenshot it. Or just take video. And then when he's in the right spot, you just clip that shot. Uh, and then this scene, this one's actually pretty cool. I feel like, um, I feel like it's not done though. Like, I feel like you ran out of time and you were, you were still in like a lot of the block out phase. Like these, these look pretty nice, but a lot of the stuff is still very, uh, geometric. A gif of that scene would be dope. Yes, it would. Uh, like these, the things in the back here where the tubes are going to them is very like low poly and geometric. I basically, what I'm seeing is, uh, you have a, a decent grasp on composition. You have some issues with it, but a decent grasp on composition you can prop, uh, and you can make assets like this one. This one looks way better than it does in here for some reason. It must be the lighting. I think it's because this one doesn't have an HDR like the other one does. But like this looks pretty cool. You got a seam there. You should try and address that. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, this mesh is pretty successful. So you can model decently. You have a decent understanding of propping and some compositional stuff. I need to see more more detail propping or detail modeling and propping. I'm happy that you were able to um, break up the cables a little bit. I think breaking them up a little further so that some of them come out further than the rest would be pretty beneficial just so that you get some, let me see if I can show you. So like if I take this right now, all the, all the cables kind of rest in that space, but if you could get the cables to do like, uh, this. If you could get the cables to do this. So it feels like it's winding a bit. That'd be really nice. You're confused. So, okay. So I'll, I'll answer that question for you and then we'll, we'll move on to the, uh, the critiques for the, the, uh, discord. So you're confused between level art and environment art. Yeah. They, they have the perceived mirrorness because of the shape. And I mean, this one might be the same as this one. You just need to have one cable that you can add. That's like, you know, that's just a little bit comes out and then goes back in and you can place that like over here and place it back there just to break up, break up the pattern. So, so can a level artist get hired on graduate level if they have decent scenes? Um, so I like to see that you can, you can texture and model and that you have good composition and good lighting. Oh my God. Bumby. Thanks man. This cable ends right here. Just continue it off the shot or put a box there so we can't see it. It's <laughs> something. Um, that's, that's a good catch, man. Your screen must be lighter than mine. So, uh, a level artist is doing a lot of propping and placing things and requesting pieces to be made either by outsourcing or 
by a props team, depending on the size of the team. Of course, if the team is smaller, then you're usually the one building that stuff. But uh, you need to be able to prove that you can do all that in order to be a level artist as well. But it's definitely, it's two paths. So it's like, yeah, what's up, Blue? How you doing? Late to say hi, but hello. Um, I think if your art skills aren't good enough, they usually will kind of pass you up. They'll they'll pass on you unless you have really good art. Let's just say that. Like it, I mean, anyone can prop a scene, have really strong composition and prop a scene. That that's something special. But someone who can prop a scene with really good composition, good lighting, and they made the assets and the assets look good, then you're freaking, then you're, then you're in, you know? See, I, I feel like I'm missing the uh, the bodies as well. Is that a hiccup in the video? What is that? Oh, yeah. You got to fix your transitions. So it fades to black being still, then fades back in without moving, and then pans through. Like, you could do this all as one single shot. I like that you got lower to the ground. That's pretty cool. And this angle is really interesting. See for this shot, oh, let's see here. This shot right here, I want to see the guys. Like you don't see them at all. There's bodies in these, right? See this angle too? I know it's not like that in the concept, but having the hands outside would be really interesting. Just seeing the fingers coming over the edge. See, in these, these transitions, you could just do a wipe with the same camera angle, right? And then when the wipe goes, the text shows. Yeah, there's bodies just chilling in there. I think they're being harvested for their energy. Something like that. Some, some matrix. Matrix shit. Yeah, overall the scene is cool. It's just it's lacking in a lot of uh, aspects when it comes to like just making it unique, the assets feeling finished, uh, material definition, like everything feels blocked out still. The breakup of the wires and cables and stuff. Um, making these characters more visible. Man, if you had the time, it would be awesome to see one of the, um, where it looks like one of the characters was able to climb out, fell to the ground. You see the blood splattered everywhere and shit like that. And then they got up and you can see their uh, footprints and blood dripping going off into this space over here. Just the storytelling and stuff, you know? But yeah, I feel like, uh, I feel like if you spent another couple of weeks working on this, and just point out those those things and address them. This could be like a thousand times better. If you can get this a thousand times better or another scene that shows the progress, I think that you're you're going to be in a position where uh, it's going to be much easier. All right, later, curious. Thanks for hanging out. You're going to be in a position that's much easier to hire you. But right now, I don't think uh, I think you're close, but I don't think you're ready. At least for game art. Anyways, okay. Yes. All right, I'm going to switch. And then we're going to look at your guys' stuff uh, on the Discord. Let's see how many we have here. So if we go, oh, someone announced for me. Who did it? Oh, curious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where are we at here? Stream critiques. Okay, so I'm going to close this. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> 